Okay, can we focus, please, guys? <clears throat> All right, trig equations. Now, last year you did these types of equations that also came up in your part A, where you had to solve for theta, which was like a sine theta equals a fraction, and then you had to do shift sine, and then it gave you the answer. Now, the difference between grade 10 trig equations and grade 11 trig equations that, is that in the grade 10 ones, they always said that your answer had to be between zero and 90. Okay, you might not have picked it up, but that was done for a specific reason, okay? In grade 11, you will get questions like this, where it just says, determine the values of X for which sine X is equal to a half. Now guys, do we recognize this graph? This is a graph of Y equals sine X. We're not gonna have to draw it every time we do a trig equation. We're just gonna use it now to yeah, I just want to show you guys something. So basically what we have here is we have the graph of y equals sine x. You can write it in there if you have space. <clears throat> and on the same set of axes, do we notice this straight line that's been drawn in here? What would the equation of this straight line be? What do you guys think? It's cutting the y-axis at... A half, right? So this is the line y equals a half. So if they're asking us to find the values of x where sine x is equal to a half, we're basically finding the points of intersection of these two lines or these two graphs rather, right? Y equals sine x equals y equals a half. Now, do we notice that we have lots of points of intersection here? Let's actually plot them. We have a point there. We have a point there, we have a point there, and there, and there. And guys, can these graphs carry on all the way to positive infinity? Yes. And what about negative infinity as well? All right. They haven't told us like we did when we drew graphs. Do you guys remember when we did trick graphs? They always told you X is an element of this to this, right? They gave you the domain. In this question, no domain was given. So guys, you are actually going to have an in infinite number of solutions to this equation, all right? Let's see, can we tell, oh, I actually listed them here underneath. All right, there we have x equals 30. There we have x equals 150. 390, is that one over there? Negative 330, is that one there? And we have negative 210, and then et cetera, because like we just said, both of these graphs can carry on forever. Right, so it's not as clear cut as the ones that you did in grade 10. You just do shift sign, you get your answer and that's the solution. Okay, because of the type of graph that we're working with, we're working with a trade graph that can carry on forever and we're working with a straight line that can carry on forever. We have an infinite number of solutions and we're not gonna have to list all of them, that would be impossible. Okay, we're going to use a specific form of notation which I'm gonna teach you now. So the method, and you can see I've also put the steps down here, but I'm just going to show you how we're actually going to write it out. Okay, so this is the equation that they've asked. Sine x is equal to a half. Now, guys, do we notice that a half is a positive number, right? So that is going to be very important. You'll see as we go forward. So I'm just going to draw a very small Cartesian plane there. In which quadrants is sine positive? One and two. So I'm just going to do that. <clears throat> okay, for the first example, if you're a bit confused, don't worry, let's just get to the end and then you'll see. Okay, so that's the first thing that you always do. You check what is the sign of the answer because guys, that is going to help you to figure out what your angles are going to be. Because if we're solving for X, we're finding an angle, right? We need to figure out sign of what angle is equal to positive a half. Okay, I'm just going to say that again. If we're solving for X, X here is an angle. So we need to figure out sine of which angle is positive or half. Now we know that whatever this angle is, it has to lie in the first or the second quadrant. All right, is that fine? Because if it was in the third or the fourth quadrant, it wouldn't be a positive value. Okay, sign of that first step. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find our reference angle, which is basically what you did in grade 10. Doing shift sign, that is going to be the reference angle now. Okay, and I think we worked with reference angles when we did angle of inclination. Do you guys remember that in analytical geometry? So we're going to find our reference angle. 
And to get that, we're going to do shift sign of a half. Okay, shift sign of 0 0.5 is equal to 30 degrees. And guys, we know that, right? Don't we? That sine 30 is a half. We've been working with that quite a lot. But guys, that is only one solution to this equation. Because yes, sine 30 is a half. But what about 360 degrees after that? What's 30 plus 360? Okay, 390. Let's see, sine of 390, that's also a half. So 390 could also be a possible solution. What about 390 plus 360? That's also a half, right? So that could also be a solution. If we add another 360, that is also a half, right? So we can't just say that X is, off, is 30 degrees because it's going to be 30 degrees, but then every 360 degrees after that. And what about before that? Right, we know that this graph has the same shape going forward. All right, so we have these values as well. Now, in order to write that down, we're going to say, I'm just gonna write here Q1. I'll explain to you now what that means. X is going to be equal to 30 degrees, yes, but also every 360 degrees after that. So we write 360 times N and N, is an element of Z. Can you guys remember what Z is from grade 10? Integers. What are integers again? Yes? Yeah, the numbers on the number line. So they are positive or negative whole numbers. Do you guys remember that? Let's add that in. I think you did that right at the beginning of grade 10, right? So integers. They are positive. and negative whole numbers. So guys, what I've actually written down there is I've written down a formula in a sense to get all of the 30 and then 360 and then another 360 and then another 360. I'll show you now on the calculator. I've written down almost like a formula to get a bunch of the X solutions. Okay, I'll just show you how that works. So if you put 30 plus 360, so 30 plus 360 times zero, is zero an integer guys? Okay, it is, right? It's not positive or negative, but it's still a whole number, okay? So zero is an integer, that gives me 30 degrees. Is that one of the points where sine is equal to a half, we got x equals 30, okay. But if I change that zero to the next integer, which is one, I'm gonna get 390. And that is actually the one that we got over here. Now, why is it 360 all the time? What is the relevance of 360 degrees if we think back to a sine graph? It repeats, yes, yeah? so there's a specific word for that. What do we call that again? It's the period of the sine graph, right? Do we remember the period of a sine graph is 360 degrees? That means that the shape repeats itself every 360 degrees. So if I have a half at 30, I'm going to have that exact same point 360 degrees later, but also 360 degrees. It's actually that one there, sorry. 360 degrees before that, all right? So that is the relevance of the 360. That's why I'm adding 360 times n. We see if we do 360 times two, which is the next integer, I'm using this formula, right? We get 750, all right? And sine of 750 is equal to a half. Okay, so it's not enough to just say x is equal to 30 degrees. That's only one solution for x. It's actually going to be where X is 30 and then every 360 degrees before that, but also every 360 degrees before that. Did I say before? I meant after and then before. All right, so negative one is also an integer. If I say 30 plus 360 times negative one, that will give me negative 330, which is this point over here. Okay, but what about these dots now? I haven't spoken about these ones. And we can see on the graph that those are also points where 
sine is a half, where our y value is a half, where sine x is equal to a half. What do we think? Where do those values come from? There's a reason for why I put quadrant one and quadrant two over here, all right? If we think if we have a triangle in the first quadrant with a 30 degree angle, it would give me sine would be a half. But if I have a triangle in the second quadrant, also with a 30 degree angle there, all right, sine will also be a half because it's also going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So we have to have a second quadrant solution as well. Okay, because we can have 30 degrees in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. So that is why it's very important as your first step, figure out which quadrants you're going to have solutions in. Okay, that's why I wrote Q1 here. That means quadrant one, quadrant two. That's going to be our second solution. <clears throat> so X is equal to, now guys, if I have that triangle in the second quadrant with an acute angle of 30 degrees, what is the actual angle in the second quadrant to get to that triangle? It's going to be 150, right? Remember, how do we get an angle in the second quadrant always? We say 180 minus theta. Theta, which in this case is the reference angle, which is 30. So you use your reference angle in the first quadrant because it's just going to be that triangle, that 30 degree triangle to give you that value for sine. In the second quadrant, if you had that same triangle, the angle to get to that triangle would actually be 150 degrees. Okay, but in order to calculate that, we take 180 minus the reference angle. Okay, we're going to do loads of examples of this, guys. So if you're confused at this point, please don't panic. Okay, we're going to sort it out. But now we again have to say plus 360N because it's not only going to be 150, but it's also going to be every 360 degrees after that and every 360 degrees before that. Now, guys, this N element of Z thing, you only have to write it the first time that you use N, okay? You're just telling basically the marker what is N, all right? N has to be integers. This we just need to simplify. I'm just going to write that this is 150 degrees plus 360 N. Now, guys, this whole thing where we're doing a plus 360 N, or if you can think of tan, what's the period of tan? 180. So for tan, we're going to do 180 degrees N. Okay, it just depends. This kind of lay out this type of equation that we have here, we call this the general solution. So this is when they haven't given a domain, so no domain given. Then GS is final answer, general solution, right? GS, general solution. So they just said solve for x, where is sine x equal to a half? All right. So we can't list specific ones because then we're going to list forever because it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so we have to leave it like that. We call that the general solution where you have your n in your formula. Okay, so see, it is different from what we did last year, all right? Because last year it was just from zero to 90. So if this was in grade 10, they would have said solve or determine the values of X for which sine X is equal to a half. And then they would have said zero to 90, like that. And I think in grade 10, it was difficult to understand the relevance of this, all right? But what they meant in grade 10 is that you're only going to give your 30 degree answer. Okay, we're not worried about any of the others. If they haven't said that, guys, we do have to list all of them. And the only way in which we can list all of them is to set up a formula to actually calculate all of them. So you do your reference angle and then every 360 degrees after or before that. And then because it's sine, positive it will be positive in the second quadrant as well so we need that angle that would give us that triangle in the second quadrant so we do 180 minus the reference angle plus 360 in again okay i don't know if that kind of makes sense all right we're going to do some more examples now 
I don't really have time. Okay, let's just look at number two quickly, which is the same question, but now very important in number two, they've given us a domain here. All right, so do we see determine the values of x for which sine x is equal to a half, where x now has to be between negative 180 and positive 360 degrees. Okay, right, if they ask this question in a test or exam, you first do your general solution. All right, you need that general solution in order to actually get your specific solution. That's what we call this. So we need specific values, specific X values. Between negative 180 and 360. But you will have to do your general solution first. Then you use your general solution to find the specific solutions. All right, so I'm going to write here the general solution that will be found in number one. So I'm going to write general solution first. Okay, I'm going to write it down again. It was these two. All right, so we had x is equal to 30 plus 360n and we got that x is equal to 150 plus 360n. So guys, if we hadn't done number one already, we would have to do that first. Okay, first you find your general solution, then we're going to use the general solution to get our specific solution. <clears throat> And guys, the actual working you don't need to show here. I am going to write it down just so that you have it written down. If n is zero, right? N. So we now have two formulas for x, but we're subbing in n values basically. All right, to get our specific answers. If n is zero, then x will be 30 degrees plus 360 times zero. Now, this is what you don't have to write down. Okay, you can just actually do it on the calculator. I'm just writing it down because it's the first time that we're doing it. What is this going to give me? 30 plus zero, essentially, which is just 30 degrees. Does that lie between negative 180 and 360? Yes. Okay, so that is going to work. If we look at our second equation, our second general solution, x will be 150 degrees plus 360 times zero, right? So 150 plus zero is then 150 degrees. Does that lie in the domain that they gave me? Negative 180 and 360, yes. Okay, so these two are all going to be specific answers for X in that domain. But those aren't the only ones, right? The domain that I drew here was bigger so that is actually what they're asking us for they're asking for negative 180 to 360 do we see that we actually have three answers in that domain all right now you're not going to have the graphs to look at so you're going to have to use your general solution to get them okay let's see if we make n equal to one right the next integer we've checked both general solutions with n equals zero now we're going to check n equals one if we look at the first one we say 30 plus 360 times one, all right, that's 30 plus 360, that is 390 degrees. Oh, sorry, it was actually, I showed too much. It was actually that negative 180 to 360. Sorry, that's what we're looking for. Okay, because that one is 390. Guys, is 390 between 180 and 360? No, so this one can't work. It's outside of the domain that they gave us. All right, what about the second one? Am I even going to bother? 150 plus 360, that's definitely going to be outside of my domain. All right, so n equals one isn't going to give us any values at work. The next one that we'll try is then n equals negative one. Obviously, if n equals one gives you values that are too big, are you going to try n equals two? No, that's going to give you values that are even bigger. So let's try n equals negative one. If we're looking at the first one, we get x equals 30 plus 360 
times negative one. And that will give you negative 330. Now, does that lie between negative 180 and 360? No. So guys, am I even going to try negative two? No. Let's look at the second one quickly. X equals 150 plus 360 times negative one. And that will give you, is it negative 210? Okay. Does negative 210 lie between negative 180 and 360? Mm -hmm. No. So that doesn't work either. Am I going to try negative 2? No. So guys, I actually only have two answers in this domain. So now please just write this quickly and then we're going. X is equal to. And now, yeah, you have to use curly brackets. I'll explain to you why tomorrow. 30 degrees and 150 degrees. You just list them like that. <clears throat> okay, I'll explain to you why we have to use this notation tomorrow. It's something that you only did in grade 10 in probability, I think, you use this notation. All right, but that is how you would go about solving a trick equation. Okay, no homework for tomorrow, guys. We're just gonna carry on doing equations tomorrow, all right. The on classroom. Yeah, the on classroom.